All right, welcome back to the show today, guys. So I have some pretty uh, exciting news to share today. Actually, today I got promoted to Software Engineer 2. Um, if you don't know what that means, essentially there's a leveling system. There's Software Engineer 1, Software Engineer 2, Senior, Principal, Staff. It depends on the company. Every, every company is a little bit different. And it's also weird because at Microsoft, within those promotions, like with between Software Engineer 1 and Software Engineer 2, you have to get promoted twice. It's a bit of a weird system, so I'm not going to go into it too much. Maybe I'll do that for another video. But the point is that I've been at this company for two years, and I've gotten two promotions, one every single year. Um, and today I, I want to share a little bit about how I've done that, how I've managed that. So stick around for the last one, because in true YouTube form, the best one is at the end. And if you follow the last one, you could get away with just following the last rule and no other rules. These may seem a little obvious at first, but listen through them because I think, uh, I, I bet you're gonna learn something. And if you don't, well, your money back. You get it? Because it's for, never mind. Just a small disclaimer. I understand that the, the pace of one promotion every single year can't keep up forever or else I would be taking Satya's job in like 10 years. I think there are, are five components to getting a promotion. So I'm gonna go through them one by one. Uh, the first one I would say is responsibility. So take as much responsibility as you can. Rarely, if ever, use the words, it's not my fault. In fact, I don't think I've ever used those words at my job and I don't plan on ever using those words. When you don't accept responsibility for something, you admit that that thing is out of your control. And when you admit something is out of your control, um, you can't really prevent it or you can't prevent against it. So when you take as much responsibility as possible, um, you're basically accepting that there are things that you could be doing. The statement changes from, it's not my fault to, how can I prevent this next time? So it's a bit of a mind shift, uh, a mind shift, a mind, a, what? A mind state shift? Now, when you're on a job, when you're working at a place like Microsoft, there are definitely gonna be times when other te when it when it really is other people's fault. Other teams broke you, other services broke you, and it'd be very easy to just say, oh, that's not our fault. But in reality, there's always something you could be doing, right? Like if a partner team goes down, there should be a way of detecting that, there should be a way of, of alerting you so you can alert them or alerting them directly or or some kind of built-in retry. Like there's always something that you could be doing. So it, it is my fault, or at least it is, it's my fault that this outcome happened, uh, even if I wasn't the one that set all the events into motion. And, and managers love to see that kind of responsibility. So the second one I wanna talk about is accountability. And with accountability, um, this one is, is kind of similar, but don't be afraid to say something is your fault. Uh, in, in the tech world, people often use the word we when there's a problem. So I'll give you an example. Um, I caused a problem in one of my first months and everybody was saying, we should have done this differently and we did this incorrectly and we should be doing this next time. But, you know, in the back of their minds, they are thinking it was you that did that, right? They're thinking it wasn't we, it was, it was Jason, it was you. Um, so I think the best thing you can do is just confront that and address it. Uh, if you confront that with saying, hey guys, like this was actually me that did this, this was my fault, this is why I did it, and this is what I learned from it, um, you're gonna see this, this dynamic shift. And what's gonna happen is instead of you defending yourself, they are gonna defend you. So if you say, it was my fault, what'll happen is the team will say, no, it's not your fault. Like, uh, you know, we didn't tell you this or this isn't well documented or we should have a better process around this. What'll happen is they will verbally say, no, this isn't your fault. And they're really gonna believe that. So that that dynamic shift from actually being accountable, it's, it's really powerful. Uh, the next one I wanna discuss is dependability. And this is kind of the one that you would think about when you know, people talk about work-life balance and being always on and always having your phone on. And so I hate to talk about this one because if you leave your phone on and your phone is always plugged into work, this one is going to be easier. I hate to say it. I know that, you know, everybody wants a, a great work-life balance, but if you leave your phone on, then it's going to be easier. 
at work, you'll probably have this concept of being on call, which is essentially, you know, uh, somebody is responsible for the service for a given week. So I'm on call right now, actually. If my phone rings and says, hey, your service is down, I have to shut off the camera, take out my work stuff, and fix it. Um, but I'm not always on call, obviously. Now, when you get out of university, you're most likely not going to have very many responsibilities, like probably just rent and student debt and world hunger and social justice. Um, but but in reality, you're probably not going to have too many like direct responsibilities. So if it's a Saturday morning and you know the on call, the on call person gets a phone call and they're working on something and you're just kind of sitting at home. If you're not doing anything else, just jump on and help them solve the problem. Uh, I mean, it's that simple. Like if you're available, help. And uh, it'll do more than you think because not only does it show that you're a dependable person and that you are helping the team, but it's also gonna teach you a lot about your service because you're gonna be on call one day and when your service goes down, you're gonna go, oh, yeah, I remember uh, my coworker had this problem a month ago and you'll know how to fix it. Um, or just in general, you'll learn about parts of your service that maybe you were never exposed to before. So the more input, the better, really. And then lastly, obviously, the person that you're jumping in and helping is just gonna really appreciate you. And they're gonna say that to your boss and that's just gonna make you look great. Uh, the next one I would say is be humble and thank people often. Now, before you go, oh, Jason, obviously I thank people. I mean, I'm Canadian. I thank people for, I thank people for being rude to me. It's weird. Like, let's say somebody helps you, right? Obviously you're gonna thank them. But what you should be doing is thanking them publicly. So for example, let's say Bill helps me do something. I don't know anyone named Bill. But let's say Bill helps me do something. I could say, thanks, Bill, you know, hang up the phone and that's it. But what I'll do is the next day at our morning meeting, which is called stand up, um, I will say, hey, yesterday I was working on this. Bill helped me and, you know, he, he gave up part of his day and he, you know, put aside his deliverables to help me. Uh, so I appreciate that. Thanks for your help. Now, this is going to this is actually really, really powerful. So first off, the boss is going to hear that Bill is helping the team. And so the boss is gonna take note of that. So that's gonna help Bill get his next promotion. Bill is gonna feel good because he was publicly praised in front of the team and the boss. So the next time you need help, Bill is more likely to give it to you. And not even just that they he wouldn't because you know teammates tend to be very helpful, but subconsciously he's gonna to wanna to do it. It's simple, really, at the end of the day. Now a lot of people miss this one because they're kind of shy. So maybe they're like, it's their turn to speak and stand up and they're kind of like, oh, what do I say? And maybe it, I, maybe it'll be stupid. Maybe he'll be like, oh, it was nothing. Just thank people. Like, it's really easy. Don't be timid about it. Just, just thank him. So this last one, like I said, uh, this last one, if you follow this one, you don't have to follow any of the other ones. And there are plenty of examples of people like this at Microsoft. Um, I mean, you should follow the other ones, but if you follow just this one, you'll be fine. And this one is uh, be curious and take ownership. So the easiest way to, to get yourself a promotion is to become indispensable, right? And the best way to become indispensable is to find parts of your system, of your service, of your organization that have been ignored and to become an expert in them. So generally speaking, people avoid what they find boring or what they find confusing, and that one's important. So they'll, they'll tend to ignore it as opposed to facing it and figuring it out. So if you're curious and somebody says like, oh, you know, this part of our system, uh, nobody likes to go into it because there's always problems. That's a great indicator like, oh, I need to become an expert in this thing. And uh, when you first start your job, you're going to be coming to your coworkers all the time, right? You're not an expert in anything. So no one asks you questions. You ask all the questions. Now, once you make this change and you become an expert in part of the service, especially one that other people don't like, they are going to be coming to you and you're going to become indispensable to the team because over the years, you're going to pick up all of these different little things. People don't like certificates. People don't like uh, this code that hasn't been ma maintained in three years. People don't like this. People don't like that. And so you pick it up, you pick it up and over time, you know, two or three years passes and all of a sudden people are like, wow, if Jason left the team today, like we'd kind of be screwed and your team's going to love you for it too because they don't want to deal with it in the first place. 
So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Uh, if you liked it, please give me a like. If you loved it, please give me a sub. That helps me out a lot. Let me know what you guys have found have been your best tips for thriving at you know a job or an internship uh, below in the description. Uh, as always, don't forget, join our Discord channel or follow me and send me any questions you have on Instagram or LinkedIn. I get a lot of questions on LinkedIn and I do try to answer them. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.